Hey guys, Davin Lim, Board Certified Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about the paradigm shift when it comes to injectables, in particular dermal fillers, which are used traditionally for volume restoration. So when we're talking about dermal fillers, there are different types, hyaluronic acid versus non-hyaluronic acid. But today I'll give you guys a new concept, and that's basically biostimulation. And why I think this is moving forward from 2023 onwards, where we still employ traditional dermal fillers, but with these new injectables, we can actually improve your skin tightening, skin firmness, without adding too much volume. So guys, let's dive into it. What are biostimulators or biomodulators? Basically, they are a group of injectables that are used to enhance the amount of collagen production together with hyaluronic acid and elastin in your skin. So as we age, after the age of 20, you basically lose between 1% to 1.5% of collagen every year. It gets worse because when women hit menopause or the premenopausal years, they lose up to 30% of collagen within five years. And when this happens, you've got the evidence of skin aging. Essentially, it's skin laxity, appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, and large pores, as well as droopy, saggy skin. So, in the context of bioremodeling agents, what we want to do is to treat patients early to compensate for the age-related decrease in collagen production, as well as collagen loss because of degradation due to intrinsic aging, in other words, aging which is pre-programmed, as well as extrinsic aging, which is basically aging due to UV radiation, as well as environmental pollutants, for example, cigarette smoke or pollution itself. Now, here's a concept. When you go to see a dentist, usually it's one of two things. Firstly, maintenance, and secondly, symptomatic. Symptomatic management is basically when you see a dentist because you've got a toothache. You go over there because you want something corrected. The second reason most people go see their dentist every year is basically prevention. In prevention, what you want to do is to reduce the amount of plaque buildup, which means it decreases the chances of decay and decreases or even mitigates or eliminates the chances of you going to see a dentist to treat a problem, i.e. correct that toothache. So it's exactly the same now. What we want to do is we want to provide patients with an avenue of biostimulation so that the reason to visit a dermatologist, plastic surgeon, or cosmetic physician is less. Because what we want to do is mitigate the age-related decrease in collagen production. And this is how we do it with injectables. So what it means is that you may still benefit from correction of volume due to deflation of the deep fat pads as compared to reduction in the dermal as well as your subdermal areas of collagen. So when I mean subdermal, you can have your fibroceptal network in the fat area being lax and that can contribute to laxity. So this gets a little bit more complex because it doesn't mean that collagen stimulating injectables are a total replacement for dermal fillers. So what it does mean is that these injectables used appropriately and early can reduce the amount of collagen loss that you may experience in the upper layers of skin in contrast to the deflation of deep fat which occurs below that level. So basically, there are two types of collagen stimulating injectables. You can talk about hyaluronic acid, and these are different from the cross-linked hyaluronic acid fillers which are traditionally used to volumize key areas such as the mid-face, temples, uh, lips, and so forth. So when we talk about collagen stimulating hyaluronic acid injectables, we're talking about high and low non-crosslink but heat stabilized compounds. And the name that everyone's familiar with is Profilo. Here's a little skew on things. Profilo itself is best as a hydrating agent. So in other words, as you decrease your hyaluronic acid, also with your collagen and elastin, Profilo works best to replace that hyaluronic acid. In other words, it rehydrates your hyaluronic acid in the deeper layers of skin. What about skincare? Where does this play in? It's different because skincare replaces hyaluronic acid high up, in other words, in your epidermis, because what that does is that rehydrates the top layer of the skin. When we're talking about injectables, we're talking about the bottom layer of the skin, whereby the skincare itself just because of the sheer molecular weight of the hyaluronic acid cannot penetrate through the basement membrane down to the deeper dermal layers. So for most patients over the age of 40, the use of something like Profilo, high and low molecular weight hyaluronic acid is non-negotiable because 
you've decreased your hyaluronic acid in the deeper layers of skin. So that's the first. The second are non-HA based biostimulators and there's a whole heap with that. You can have your PLLA which is poly -L lactic acid, trade name Sculptra. You can have your PDLLA which is poly D lactic acid. You can have your things, for example, your CAH or calcium hydroxylapatite. So all of these are established players and they all have a different avenue when it comes to improving your skin laxity because some may give you more volume and some may give you more skin tightening. But what they do ubiquitously is they increase the amount of inflammation in your skin and has to provide fibrosis or collagen formation. Another few players into the market include your PCL or polycaprolactones and with that they're usually two injectables an older one called the Lance and a newer one called Gori. The latter is more liquid the former has more particulate sizing so one is more towards volume and one is more towards skin tightening the downside about these new injectables is that generally speaking they provide a little bit more inflammation and may be harder to modulate if you're not too experienced with injectables so guys there's a new injectable called polynucleotide and polynucleotide trade name regeran is relatively new in australia however this has been well established in countries such as Asia or continents such as Asia for the past three to five years. Now what it is is basically DNA which is made from salmon, salmon gonads. It's invented in Korea and what happens is that this is placed in the upper layers of skin, the very superficial layers of skin and it can act as a scaffolding of which cells for example like the fibroblasts can proliferate and build in collagen. So when you look at all these injectables, they have a play, they have a role to play in regards to skin rejuvenation. Some of them are more hydrating, that's your hyaluronic acid. Some of them cause more skin tightening, for example, your polycaprolactones. While some of them cause both tightening, but also some volume, and those are the established players like your poly-L lactic acid and your poly-D-L lactic acid, as well as your calcium hydroxyl appetite. So guys, this is the new shift in how we're managing skin tightening and skin rejuvenation moving forward for 2023 and so forth. Fillers still play a role when we're trying to replace deep fat, when we're trying to give that finesse, when we're filling lines, when we want to re-volumize and we want to redrape skin. However, collagen stimulating fillers or collagen stimulating injectables, they're a whole new realm of which you maintain your skin on a yearly basis. So that, much like going to a dentist, can actually reduce or even prevent your visits to a dermatologist so that it can decrease the amount of skin tightening that you may require later on in life. I hope that concept is easy to understand.